All right. Welcome back to Comic Book History, Episode 68. This one discussing the replacement group uh, series in a way for Avengers West Coast. Presumably canceled due to low sales. Despite the fact the series was really good, the whole 102 issue run. Yeah, replaced with a series called Force Works. They're basically the setup for this series happened in the final issue of Avengers West Coast. Dan Ab and Andy Lenning, along with a guy named Tom Tenney, I'm not really for this guy. Basically, in the way this had basically had the West Coast rebranded as the Force Works. And the members were Iron Man, Scarlet Witch, the Julia Carpenter, Spider Woman, US Agent, War Machine, Wonder Man. This was the lineup when the group started in the first issue. Though, if you read the first issue, oh my god, it, it, it is like, I read it recently for a review, like, when I was reading the trade that collected the first 15 issues of this short lived series. Like, oh my god, this artwork is atrociously bad. And this is appropriate for 1994. Like, I know my friend Edgar, he loves this series. And I agree, this series is good, it has great writing. Terrible artwork. Now I was looking up my here on Wikipedia like, damn, 10 artists for 22 issues? Excuse me. Here are the artists, basically, they have for the series. You had Tim Tooney, who did the first four issues. Todd Smith, issue 5. Dave Taylor, 6 through 7. Staz Johnson, 8. Jim Califort, 9 through 12, which I think is probably the highest that any writer, any artist did for the series. Four freaking issues, not the average writer. David Ross, this issues 13 and 14. Jim Chugi, this issues 15 and 17. 18 and 21 was done by Yancey Lobbett, 1920, Hector Abulira, and the final artist, Andrew Wildman. Yep. And the scoop was headquartered of a place known as The Works. It is a building headquartered based out of a mountain. Yes, a mountain. Where it has a waterfall. It's a really cool look look location. And... <sighs> I'm thinking of like as far as I know, this is one. This is actually technically in the way the first superhero group headquartered out of a mountain. Of course, next one being Thunderbolt Tab back in the late 1990s, well about five years after this. Yep, and they mostly did some. They did have their own like separate like setup. Now Wonder Man himself basically we killed off in issue one due to just something with the century. He was a brand new character in Juice. And he was with the group of the whole series. He was by far one of two, one of three original characters in Juice the series. Although it's Sire Master and a character named Moonraker, who was, you might think, Moonraker? You mean the movie? No! A space phantom. Yeah, he was in Juice during the last seven issues of the series. Yep. Initially put, basically, the group was only part of two crossovers. Yeah, first being The Hands of the Mandarin, which was actually listed up to a two-parter for, uh, uh, for the Iron Man animated series. It's an excellent crossover, crossover Iron Man, War Machine, Force Works, and Material from Marvel Comics Presents. It's an excellent story. And then they're on their own for a bit until around issue number 16. What happens in issue 16? The crossing happens. By far, one of the worst crossovers, and I agree with this opinion. I read it. It is terrible. My God, this was terrible. Like, it established a stupid retcon that, oh, Tony Stark has been agent of, of Kang the Conqueror since the founding of the Avengers. And there's a time travel snaggins, and then apparently they kill off, apparently... President Tony dies and replaced by a teenage version of himself, who basically operated as Iron Man during the last year of the book, before the book was restarted under Heroes Reborn. Yeah, by far one of the most weirdest things. And you're probably thinking, is that if a Force Works? Did, did was that the last name by saw Force Works? Well, there was offhand mention of them in Civil War Six. Well, Civil War Two, Civil War One, Number Six. And they were also briefly brought up in the pages of War Machine Secret Invasion. As a branch of the initiative operating somewhere in the West. And then, this was back in like 2008, mind you. And then, get this. 12 years later, Marvel brings back Forceworks. As a government team, a government sanctioned team, led by 
get this, Daisy Johnson of all people. Yeah, it's not with John Walker, War Machine, and like a few others. There is also Gauntlet as part of this team. Yes, Gauntlet. Solo who quit for the first issue. And they were seen by Maria Hill. Why the heck Maria Hill for? No idea. Mockingbird is here. Although it was, also, it was a really interesting miniseries. It's written by Matthew Rosenberg. And I, I mean, the premise is interesting, but it's by far one of his most weakest works he's actually worked on. And this is by far of all the tie-ins for Iron Man 2020. Yeah, because it was a tie-in. It lasted three issues. And after that, nothing. Like, there's no announcements. We're supposed to span it. It just, just was their last appearance. And that was just last year. Yep. Now, what happened to the group afterwards? Well, most of the group went back to the Avengers. Well, the surviving members, anyways. Sentry himself disappeared for several years until he popped up in 2012 in a two annual event for toward that came out toward the end of Michael Bendis' run for Avengers. And as for Side Mancer, she would occasionally appear. Even afterwards, she basically has some cybernetics. And she would mostly appear in, like, Iron Man-related stuff. Though, I think, like, the most recent appearance was actually just not too long ago. Hmm. Yep. And, well, not much else to talk about when it was the Force Works. It was a short-lived series. But I do recommend checking it out because of how, well, even though the artwork is pretty bad when you start out. Basically, there's technically three trades that collect the series. Yes, there is. There is the Iron Man, uh, Avengers of Iron Man Force Works trade, which collects the first 15 issues of the Ascan edition, which basically is something they produced for her at the start of the series. Material from the Collector's Preview and Century of Sun was a one shot featuring new character Century. There is the a crossover Hands the Mandarin, really good crossover, I think we're checking it out. Which basically collects the whole entire crossover, it's a really quick crossover. And then there's the crossing, which collects the rest of the series. Yep. Would I recommend checking this out? It's up to you. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's pretty much Force Works in a nutshell. A very short-lived series. That was actually quite interesting, to say the least. Mm -hmm. They were pretty much a proactive team. Mostly when they tried to have disasters before they actually happened. Trying to prevent disasters. And they're pretty effective, too. There's nothing really wrong with the group at all. They had... They're most like an Iron Man based team in a way. And I think my friend Edgar is. Uh, I remember a few. I think it was like a few years ago. He said he was going to cover this series eventually when he reached issue 300. When he was covering Iron Man. And I don't think he's gotten that far. I think the latest I heard, he got like 100. I think that was it when it comes to him. When it comes to Iron Man. Though he since restarted his reviews for some reason on, on the Iron Man stuff. I have no idea why. But. Also, in case you're curious, so like, did the members get their own spin-off stuff with this thing? Well, Iron Man, Iron Man had its ongoing series, so that wasn't really much fact to this one. War Machine did get this series, uh, I think it was just launched prior to this one was. Yeah, it was actually launched just not long before the start of this series. I'd say like about a month prior to the start of the series. We actually launched the War Machine series. Though the thing is with this one, War Machine actually ended just after this series did. Yeah, War Machine managed to last for 25 issues. Yep. And there was also Markham Presents, but not much there because the book was ending anyways. What issue 175? Because look, look, look at this. Material from issues 172 and 172. Three issues later, the book ended at 175. Yeah, so they weren't really active very much. Hawkeye himself did join the team eventually during, like, I think it was just after the Handsome Andrew crossover he joined. But... That's when he came part of the team, and he... This lineup being much the same, with the exception of, well, Hawkeye joining the team, and replacing Winter Man with Sentry. It made mostly the same roster of the whole run. I do recommend checking out this series, just because of Iron Man. Yep. But yeah, that's it for this particular, well, very short comic book history video. Usually these videos are a bit longer, but... There's not really much to talk about. There's not really much to talk about when it comes to Force Works. I mainly discuss this, this group because, well, they're an Avengers related group, so why not talk about them? Despite the fact they're more associated with Iron Man than they are with the Avengers. Because they're basically led, they're kind of in a way funded by Iron Man, but they're led by the Scarlet Witch. Yeah, and also there's spare time. Scarlet Witch is after a very short hairstyle, and 
she also basically dressed like if you watch the Iron Man anime series in this period of time. Basically, everybody's wearing the same outfits they were in that series. Yes, Forest War could actually feature on that series too. Though, mostly put like in the premiere episode, they take a bunch of villains who work with the Mandarin, who was actually the main villain in the first season. Though, Hands the Mandarin basically had him get back his 10 rings. Mm -hmm. Yep. But not much else to say when it comes to Forest Works. I mean, could this group ever come back? I highly doubt it because there's, there's not much interest in the, in the Forest Works at all. If you're curious, there are three trades. Like, first one was published in 2013, the Hands of Andrew crossover. The, the the regular Forest Works trade, which costs the first 15 issues plus other stuff, which came out just a few years ago. And then, of course, there's the Crossing, which came out in 2012. Yeah, only three trades. Well, plus, of course, the Iron Man 2020 stuff. Yep. But yeah, that's it for Sigler View. Now you're probably thinking, what am I going to cover next? I mean, I've already covered pretty much the Avengers, which was Coast, the Invaders, and let's see. I'm trying to think here. Yeah. So, you're probably thinking, okay, is there any other Avengers group you want to talk about? Well, I'm not going to talk about the new Avengers because I've already talked about them already. And same thing with Sig Avengers. Am I talking about Avengers Academy? Hmm. I don't have really big interest in talking about them. I'll probably discuss them when I talk about the trades in the comic in the comic corner stuff. So what could I cover next? Well, why I talk about a spin-off of the X-Men. So for episode 69, probably not coming out today. I want to basically save something for tomorrow. I'll want the Black Clover manga review because I want to continue reviewing at the Spetfix no anime. So tomorrow I'm discussing the new mutants. Okay? That's the next video. Bye.